In my last series of paintings, I was uh, working with a lot of layers and I would build paint up and I would remove it and build it up and remove it and I was working with edges, a lot of texture and a lot of, you know, tectonic, you know, very energetic uh, movements on canvas, on wood board, uh, a lot of, you know, using a knife to cut through things and uh, bringing up, revealing those layers underneath uh, by cutting through the upper layers um, really built up this, this complex texture. And um, I like the results I got from many of those, uh, those uh, works, but I wanted to try something a little different. I still want to work with layers, but instead of building up and then ripping through it, I wanted to build something up that was a bit more ethereal. Um, think, uh, you know, the way a landscape artist might build up um, uh, clouds or a sky, but in my case, not represent representational. So a lot of um, working with a lot, a really dry brush and get sort of a foggy, filmy look to things. And uh, so, so far it's coming along pretty well. In fact, this one here is finished. Uh, I like how You've got these dark black hidden behind almost clouds and then so you have these multiple layers here. You even have a bit of collage right here, a piece of blue paper I painted and then attached and then painted over. Um, so and I like the big sweep. This is all I, I like I like all the marks and uh, this is so this feels new. This feels some, something exciting, something different. I do, as I have mentioned before in previous video, videos, I have a problem with acrylic markers and the problem is that I like to overuse them. Here, this one was successful. It worked out well. Um, I should have a rule though. After 10 o'clock, I should not be allowed to have an acrylic marker in my hand because that's when I make some uh, bad decisions. And the other two panels that I'm working on here um, were not as successful so far, but I'm still continuing to, to um, work on them. And I'm trying to keep the palette uh, muted as well. So, they, you know, we've got some warm neutrals and some cooler neutrals and just little hints of color. Unfortunately, I didn't stick to that rule with the other ones. And I'm going to show you that in a sec. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on at least one of them. And now this guy. Well, I think I noticed two of these paintings, all three of them. When I took my black marker, I must have been stabbing or something, but I always stabbed in the upper right hand corner on all three of them. I mean, how repetitive is that? You can tell because the drip marks were obviously going this way. So let's turn this around. Let's uh, shake that up. Sure, whatever, it doesn't matter. Because um, right now, I want to get rid of the yellow. Let's go darker. Let's do it with a dark dark gray. So I've got this, um, you know what, I'm just going to mix this up from scratch because one can. I don't know if you can still see my palette there. So. And I've got a fair amount of coverage here. And I want this pretty dark though. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. If it's anything yellow, I'm gonna attack it. Might leave a little poking through here, like I like that with the black. And I do wanna get most of it hidden. And then I'll decide if I need to do anything else. I should lock up the yellow marker. Lock up all the markers. Don't let them near them. And I'm not worried about trying to make this misty at this point because I don't want much of the yellow left. I'm just brute force knocking it back. Okay, now that I have this gray on gray edge up here though, I do like the idea. Hang on, I have a thought. 
I do like the idea of blending that a little bit. Remember, one is dry, one is wet, so I can, I can blend the wet one and it's not gonna move the dry one too much. So I'm gonna take another paper towel. These are the paper towels that I use to dry my brushes with. I reuse them for this very purpose. Might as well use a paper towel twice, right? And I'm gonna dab. Dabbing along the edge just to see if I can blend it a little. Uh, it's blending it, but it's also removing it. So I'm starting to see what's underneath. It's okay. <laughs> There's not very much left. I, I like this shape here. That's, that's interesting. And it's kind of cool that it disappears. Um, and I might end up painting over that section. You never know. Now, just because I'm not doing as much carving through doesn't mean I can't do a little bit, right? It's kind of fun to have some lines and texture. I'm just not going, <coughs> you know, killing it. Okay, so really all I've done is I've created a, a ground or a background for the painting with some interesting bit there. Got a little bit of yellow, got this mark down here, which may or may not survive. Um, yesterday I was doing very dark, dark grays, and then at the last minute I thought, you know what, I'll get some spray paint out. Um, and so that's what that is there. It's held pretty far away because I want to... Uh, I didn't want it to look like I just, you know, that, that telltale spray mark. I want it to be cloudy. And I have this huge collection of spray paint um, that I use for my mobiles, and I uh, hardly ever use it for actual painting. And it's because I'm lazy, because I gotta put on the respirator and all that, and it's a big thing, and it just doesn't feel very impromptu. But here, I thought, you know what? This is gonna give me that, that hazy, cloudy look I'm, I'm looking for. And so we've already got, we've got our whites here and you know, we've got a little bit more contrast, uh, but, I, but we don't have any blacks. We have zero color now, all the color is gone. Um, the only color was yellow. So do I want to continue that? I can see a little bit of yellow there, but otherwise it's just kind of black and white. So I have options here, right? Um, what should I do? Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Earlier today, I was thinking, you know what? I never use magenta paint. <laughs> or pink paint for that matter. Well, I use pink paint sometimes, but um, I was really thinking maybe I should try magenta and just see how it looks. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've got some uh, Quinn magenta here. Question is, how do I want to apply it? There's all sort, and this is going to be a super bold move here. Probably want to put it over the widest area because it's transparent. Um, oh, you know what I want to do? There was a there was a little an effect that I had on a previous painting that I quite liked. I'm going to try it now. It's just a paint guide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one sharp edge and one brush edge. And I'm going to distress it a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Let's see what do I want. I'm going to have it sort of here. I want this to be straight. I want it to be parallel. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to be fussy. See? Fussy. First of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, you can see the black marker there, so I want some of that to show, but then I'm gonna start kind of there, 
and get my straight edge in. And then I'm gonna come different directions, just kinda be a little blobby out here, like so. All right, and then we've got that. Now I'm going to get my handy dandy blade and distress it. And it's probably going to get painted over to some degree, but that's okay. I'm also going to get some black in there now. And as tempting as it is to get a acrylic paint marker, um, I probably will do that because I, I like that theme of those sort of twiggy lines, um, but not yet. So instead, I'm going to just. Do something with the palette knife. I'm just twirling the brush here. It's kind of the same, similar mark to uh, what the um, pen can do, but it's a little less sharp and more brush-like, because it is, after all, a brush. I'm just trying to break that up a little bit. And so far, I'm not impressed with the magenta. I'm going to do some white, the, the, the gray. My pen, as you can see, I've been running it through black and uh, it's also almost out of ink. So <laughs> this is uh, got blue in it. Wow. Oh no, that's that <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what happens. And I'm gonna do the same pattern. I'm gonna do it over this because I'm I'm just not liking that right now. Look at that. Multicolored. Yeah. It's definitely time for a refill because I can't even get it to drip. One thing I also like to do, you'll see this in my work a lot, is I use these uh, uh, fine line applicators, and so I've got white. Uh, white paint in here that's really runny. Um, it's e either I'll mix it with water or I'll mix it with like uh, airbrushing uh, fluid uh, so you can just squirt it out. And it makes really fine lines but not like a pen would. They're, they're chaotic and unpredictable and that can be really fun. It just adds, you know, fine detail because a lot of this is big strokes and then you can also do dots and kind of glop it up there's a dot yeah you know what this magenta is not this I'm gonna get rid of this magenta so this uh, this painting 
has uh, definitely a few more cycles to go through before before it's anything. As soon as I turned off the video last time, I um, had, set, had set this off to the side and I had said, oh, I wasn't really happy with the magenta, all that, and I looked over it and I went, wait a minute, wow, that's coming along. Uh, it's funny how just uh, looking away, looking back, or just getting a different perspective on something uh, makes you see what you weren't seeing before. I really like this line here. Remember how my uh, marker had a little bit of black on the end? So it makes this sort of, looks for, adds depth. It's you know, like a three-dimensional line there. So I like a lot of what's going on here, but it's not finished yet. This area down here is a little murky with the black, so I need to, need to bring up some definition there. And I also need something here and a different color. So I was thinking, like, the, uh, the, the first of this series had a piece of blue collage paper in one corner and I had some paint over the top of it and I like the idea of maybe adding some collage here. So I grabbed some collage papers that I have. I just, uh, sometimes I'll offload a brush or whatever on a piece of paper and I'll throw it in a, a box. So I have a few things and I just want to see if maybe there's a color combination or something that spurs uh, an idea here. and. Likely I'll, I'll uh, attach it with some, uh, some gloss medium or matte medium, whatever, whatever's closest, and um, then let it dry and then maybe, you know, uh, do a, a layering effect with uh, paint again. So let's see what we've got going here. Some serious deep purple there. And if we did something in the blue range. There's more turquoise. We've got that blue mat. And then I have this one here. This sort of blue green. Now, this here, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to have this a same size object, same shape in the same spot. So I, I either need something really small, in which case What's the point? Or something bigger. So I probably need most of this gold area right here. And then I'm going to put paint over it, so in different places to kind of blend it in. All right, so I don't, I don't, I don't want to just lay a square of butcher paper down. I'm going to tear it here. I'm going to Just trying it in different places. I feel like I wanted to overlap that. Just by a little bit. So I'm using this as glue. And I'm not too worried about getting some on the painting itself because, well, that's where this is going. And also I'm doing this right in the area that it's going to go. That's pretty thin stuff. It's almost like tissue paper. Now I'm going to do a coating over it too to lock it down. Just get some of the bubbles out there. And gloss medium goes on sort of translucent, but it dries. So this is gonna have some interesting wrinkles too, or at least it's, it's gonna have wrinkles. Whether they're interesting or not remains to be seen. And the gold will shine through once, uh, once this has had a chance to dry. 
Okay, so we're gonna leave that to dry and then we'll come back to it and we'll add the white layer and figure out what we're gonna do over here. Meanwhile, I'm gonna work on another painting. Okay, so this is not quite dry, but close enough. And I'm going to get out some white paint and again, use a very dry brush to give it a translucent effect. bit thick down there up here so drag kind of randomizes the edges a little bit see how I don't know if you can see that there but it's just kind of not something I could have done if I had meant it Okay, I think that's as much as I want to do on the gold patch there because I'm going to save that white for the other one. Um, that's blended it in just enough. And now I need some, I don't have any solid blacks. I've gotten rid of all of them. So that's what's going to come in here next. <clears throat> I'm going to try something here. Uh, you know, you know the rule. Is it past 10 o'clock at night? No, it's not. Okay, I can use the markers. We should have splatters, you say? All right, that is interesting. I'm going to let that sit for now. This one is getting close to being finished, I think. This area is a little busy, so um, maybe I'll even come in there with gray, I don't know. All right, I did some, uh, just a little bit extra work after I shut off the video. And uh, I just wanted to show you what I did here. So this area up here was pretty muddled and just undefined, uh, just busy without being anything. So. Initially, I was thinking maybe I would paint uh, like bright pink over it and maybe make that the center of uh, interest because it would be pretty seriously uh, drawing the eye there. Ultimately, though, I settled on this band of black because I, I wanted the, the interest to still be over here mostly. And then I took a much smaller acrylic uh, marker in white and uh, made these patterns right here, just kind of scribbled and squished so it dripped and then I turned it around and suddenly it was finished so there you have it I'm uh, pretty excited about it and uh, there you go and I've got a title to it. it's called the guilt of the astronaut 
So anyway, thanks for watching the video on this uh, painting, how it uh, came to be, and I hope you found it interesting. Remember to subscribe and hit that like button and uh, comment. Tell me what you think. Thanks.